Well, they're both nine millimeter. They're both technically pistols. Just one didn't come from the factory like this and one did. Is a braced pistol better than a AR-9? Let's talk about it. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range. We've got ourselves quite the question because with the advances and evolution of firearms throughout history, we start to find ourselves questioning whether or not some very popular, famous firearms are really needed with modern technology. And I'm talking about pistol caliber carbines such as the MP5 or our Angstad here versus braced pistols like a braced Glock 19 that you see right here. When I look at these, I'm like, you know, I really do love shooting AR9s, really love shooting MP5s or SP5s. And they have a purpose, absolutely. But then you start thinking about 300 blackout and firearms being built to similar sizes or even the exact same gun, just chambered in 300 blackout. And then you think, why would I spend the money, like, you know, close to three grand, right at about a grand, a couple hundred, <laughs> when you could just buy a brace and then attach it to a gun you already have. And so this debate, this topic is all about the PCCs versus braced pistols. And yes, as always, I want to hear from you guys down in the comment section below because what I'm going to be giving you are my opinions on the subject and why the MP5 is still king. So let's go ahead and just roll right into it. Is it cool? The cool factor is totally there. We see it here with the Recover Tactical 2020 brace. They also, there's also like the Flux Defense braces, which have a military contract to be used in conjunction with the SIG P320 or the M18, M17 series, all because people are looking for that modularity of the firearms they already have. It's cost saving, it's effective, it works, so makes sense. But at the end of the day, I, I kind of like to consider myself a zero compromise kind of guy and I want to say that look if I'm going to have a gun for a specific job that's what its job is going to be. If I'm going to have a sidearm it's going to be a sidearm. It's not going to be my dedicated primary. I might have a sidearm and a dedicated primary such as the Angstad here that I could switch mags in which is super cool and not exactly unheard of whatsoever. But I want this to be my primary, and if I've got this guy now as my primary, I'm trying to think, am I just going to be carrying two pistols with me, like this here? I mean, I guess, sure, why not? There's nothing against that whatsoever, but I like the idea of having something as a dedicated primary firearm because that is its intended role. I already know that with something like the MP5 and its roller delayed action, I'm going to be having a very pleasant and soft shooting experience. Sure, a direct blowback AR9 isn't going to be as smooth, well, still smooth, but not as light recoiling as like the MP5, but I can definitely be a lot more stable with this. Again, I've got an M-Lock rail out here where I can add grips and whatnot if I want to. I can SBR it, throw on a vertical grip, whatever you want to do. Throw on a stock if you want, again, if you SBR it, but it does have the SBA3 brace on it. So I do have great points of contact on this guy for added stability, which is great. The Recover Tactical 2020 that you see right here, well, they pretty much do all that, but in a much more compact way. So if you're looking for the most compact and affordable option, the Recover 2020 is definitely where you're gonna be looking. If you've already got your Glock 19, Glock 17, a Smith & Wesson, a SIG, whatever it might be, and you're just wanting to add that extra stability for a home defense or whatever it might be, then you might have found your answer with this guy. Let's take it down range really quick. Let's take a couple of shots through it and let's just see how it feels and we're going to do a complete recoil comparison and all that type of fun stuff make sure my dot's set up so i can actually see it which it is but what's cool about this guy is too you don't have to really change anything on the gun other than adding this little charging handle that you see right here you can still use your regular iron sights if you want to which you can probably see right here from that sight picture the venom that i have on here by vortex sits up nice and high which makes it for a great platform to get down on and see. If I'm using just my iron sights, it gets a little tricky, but I could easily do it. So if my red dot dies on me, battery, whatever it might be, I can still get down there and engage the target. So let's go ahead and take a couple of shots with this guy. I can still actuate all my controls, which is pretty sweet. And let's just see how this feels. Oh, 
Well, feels pretty good. Feels like how I would expect a Glock to shoot, right? But let's say I need to get into it quickly. Can I still shoot this guy, you know, like a typical gun or whatnot? Sure. Feels good. What about using the iron sights? Nice. Now I'm out of ammo. What do I do? I'll go to my spare, I guess. Why not? Then deploy that guy again. Huh. What do you know? <laughs> so... That's pretty sweet. And also too, when I say you're saving some price, for under $200, you can get the Recover Tactical 2020 brace for your firearm, you can get the Magwell, well, it's a mag catch, it's not a vertical grip. Just want you guys to know it's intended use, all right? Uh, you can also get the Picatinny adapters for both sides and also the optics mount. Again, for under 200 bucks, that seems like a much more affordable option if you want something more along the PCC line. I've only got a couple rounds left here. By the way, if you're curious to see how well this thing locks into place, it's not going anywhere, which is pretty cool. You'll notice right here, it has that little tab that locks in right into where the mag actually locks in onto the gun. Pretty sweet, right? So definitely offers a much more stable system for you to shoot your pistol with, which is a lot of fun. Let's compare that to the Angstad over here, which again is just a direct blowback design, still chambered to nine millimeters, still takes Glock mags. I think my EOTech is sighted in, we're about to find out. <laughs> Let's collapse that just a little bit. Now you'll notice too, I'm still gonna get pretty much the same type of ballistics. I do have a slightly longer barrel on this guy, so I'll get a little bit better velocity out of this but I should get pretty much very similar ballistics. You'll notice it's much larger, but am I more stable with it? Am I gonna be able to engage that target with quicker follow-up shots? Let's find out. So even though, yes, ultimately I am able to be a little bit more precise with this guy, I think. I feel myself, I can see that the reticle is jumping right on target. I have a little bit better stability. I can get my hand around this guy here, which feels pretty good. Nice. Remember how I said, hopefully my optic was sighted in? It was about four feet high. Now we're sighted in. So advantages of using something like an AR9, well, it's got AR controls that we are, most of us are all pretty familiar with. So bolt release, just like that. Safety, right there. And I feel pretty good about its stability. Is it a little bit heavier? Yes, but that's also gonna help with a little bit of recoil reduction and mitigation. And because I can actually get my hand around the muzzle of this guy or around the barrel of this guy with utilizing the rail, I can really control that recoil a little bit more and allow for a little bit quicker follow-up shots and accurate. And from about 30 to 40 yards where we're at, that is pretty sweet with a nine mil. Not saying I can't do that with the Recover Tactical or any braced type of pistol, but again, just remember having a dedicated gun for that. If you want a PCC, a pistol caliber carbine versus a braced pistol, it might be a little bit easier for you. But again, if, if concealability is a big concern, you want something, by the way, that actually comes with a holster, which is kind of nifty. Uh, if your concealability is a big concern, affordability is a big concern, again, that braced pistol is probably where it's gonna be for you. I just had to finish that out, right? Now, what's cool too is, yeah, it takes Glock mags. That's what everybody wants to know, right? But like I said, AR controls, which most of us are pretty familiar with, the reliability is definitely here. It's also definitely found in the brace. It's using a Glock in this, in this case, so Glock isn't exactly known for not being reliable. But if we're talking about reliability, stability, accuracy, it's gonna be really hard to beat this. But you know, if I'm looking at those two, 
those definitely beat the price point of one of these guys. Because subtract the brace, subtract the rail, the light, and the optic, and the optics mount, <laughs> and the binary trigger, you're still looking at a $3,000 pistol. Ooh, is it worth it? Well, I mean, obviously it's an HK SP5, you know, MP5. So let's go ahead and give this guy a couple of shots here and see how it performs. It's, it's an MP5, so you know, it'll be fine. So as you can tell, there's barely any recoil. I've got the binary trigger in there, so I'm cheating a little bit when it comes to follow-up shots, but it's very easy to keep that dot on target. I mean, I've only got two rounds left. As you can tell, it's easy to go through those rounds when it's such a light, light recoiling gun. Very fun and accurate. Let's just go semi for these last two. Yeah, that makes it way too easy. Granted, again, nine mil. So all of these shoot the same caliber. The barrel length on the Glock is a little bit shorter than the barrel length on the Angstat, which is a little bit shorter than the barrel length on this guy. You're looking at just under nine inches, right around just under six inches on the Angstat AR9, and you're looking at just right around five inches, just under five inches for the Glock 19. So again, having a dedicated sub gun or PCC for your primary seems like the better way to go. Again, that added velocity you get out of longer barrel makes sense. You get a little bit better terminal ballistics on that, which is great. But I still find myself wanting to go and shoot the recover tactical a little bit more because, well, it's fun simply. And also to, <laughs> hey mom, we got a Chris Vector at home. It's just, it's simple. To install the brace on the gun, all it takes is fitting the the brace around the actual receiver of the or the grip, and you tighten down this one screw. That's it. Oh, and yeah, you can install the charging handle if you want to. You can still get in there and grab it though, which is pretty easy. Well, let's just shoot this just a couple more times because of how fun it actually is here. There we go, nice. And it is very lightweight. Like I said, it even comes with a little holster system, which I don't have with me right at the moment, but it's just a regular paddle holster that you can clip right in, or you could have it sitting somewhere. Again, I'm thinking, well, you could have it sitting in your vehicle. It, this would be a premier vehicle firearm to use because if you need to shoot maneuver around the vehicle, shoot through windows, whatever else, you still have your red dot, you can pull up easily and gain, and hit your targets, you can pop this guy around, and then from here, you can go ahead and engage those targets, and if you're, again, in close quarters such as a vehicle, this makes it very nice to use. So, there you go. If you want the stability, you want a sole purpose, a dedicated firearm for your primary, whatever it might be, and in a pistol caliber, go with the pistol caliber carbine, such as the MP5, such as an AR9, or like the Angstat UDP9, that, you see right here. Sure, there's other options out there. The CMMG Banshee is another great option. Love those guys and their operating system that they have in that. A bunch of them. Aero Precision came out with their EPC-9, which is pretty sweet also. So there's definitely a lot of different configurable uh, options or uh, just a wide variety of options, I'm trying to say. But then you get into the question of, well, what about 300 Blackout? Wasn't it kind of designed to destroy nine millimeter as far as a primary firearm goes now. I mean, I look at the SIG Rattler and I'm like, well, the 300 blackout, you're getting better distance with, better velocities, better suppression, better in a lot of ways. So doesn't that just kind of make all these obsolete? Well, if you've got that question, we just released a video where we do a SIG Rattler chambered at 300 blackout versus the nine mil MP5. We have Katie come out here and shoot it because it would be good to actually get a new shooter's perspective or one that doesn't have as much experience as pulling the trigger out here on the range to really give her thoughts on it. So that's what we did. So check that video out with Katie. Again, 300 blackout SIG versus the nine millimeter HK. It's a good time. 
Anyway, I wanna hear from you guys down in the comment section below. For me, I'm gonna go with a dedicated firearm. If I want a braced pistol, that's gonna be its role and it's probably gonna be my vehicle gun, not to stay in there, but to have it somewhere nice and compact and close by because again, you get that right there. I needed the added stability, boom. Then I could get to maybe my primary 5.56 rifle or something like that, right? And with the holster option, you can still keep that as a backup, which is great. Bedside gun, something like that, where I don't have to worry about maneuvering inside a tight quarter like a vehicle, I'm gonna go with the PCC more likely. That's just me though. I wanna hear from you guys down in the comment section below. Sure, mission dictates gear, and that's ultimately what I'm saying here. You got my opinion on it. I wanna hear from you guys. With all that being said, if you've always dreamed of owning the HK MP5, well, you can legally and get the full auto version and all that's pretty sweet, but we're giving away the closest thing we can, which is the HK SP5 uh, with the Knight's Armament rail. We got the UTG angled foregrip mod button for the Surefire light and the Hollow Sun Shake Awake light, which I, or excuse me, optic, which I like a lot. And I'm making this pretty much our best home defense gun, including a binary trigger, because you know, double taps for the win. But ultimately, this thing right here just rocks with the SP Tactical Brace. It is definitely a good time. Head on over to ClassicFirearms.com to get your entries. Don't miss out, and don't forget to utilize the code word that you're seeing at the bottom of your screen right now to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. Don't miss out. I'll see you guys down in the comments section. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. We'll see you soon.